If you've ever wanted to build a movie app for your portfolio or just for fun, that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this video. We'll use a real API to get movie results as we type. We'll add a Netflix style horizontal scroll and zoom as we hover over. We'll be able to add movies to our favorites. But when we refresh the app, the favorites will still be there. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so our movie search app wouldn't be any good if we didn't have any movies to search for. So we are going to use the OMDB API to search for some movies and display these in our app. If we go to omdbapi.com and click on API key, fill out this form, hit submit and then we should get an email to your inbox that has your api key and some other stuff so the next thing you want to do is activate the key just by clicking this link and it should say your key has been activated mine's has been activated already uh, so if we go back to our email the next thing we want to do is copy this link and we're going to paste it in to postman just to make sure that everything's working fire up postman paste the url in you can see the postman has picked up the query parameters that are in this request so i is an id of a film and api key is our api key that we were just sent so if we click send and we should get a list of json back and we do which has some details about a film in this case it's guardians of the galaxy okay good so this is working so instead of i what we want to do is use the S parameter, so it just stands for search, which you can see in the documentation. So check the descriptions for details on that. And as a value, we're just going to type Star Wars as an example. If we hit send again, this time we get an array back, and each item in the array has a movie with a title, a year, um, an ID, a type, and a poster. So the poster is what we're going to display in our app. Okay, so now that that's all working, the next thing we're going to do is create a React project. So I'm just going to use create react app for this but you can use whatever you want and i'm going to call it movie app after that's done its thing we're going to change our directory to movie app and then we're just going to install bitstrap bitstrap is the css framework that we're going to use to save us having to write our own css okay so now our project is set up the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a state object which is going to hold the movie results that come back from the search so we'll create a new state object and we'll call this movies and it's going to be an empty array just for now. So we have to import the state hook from React. So if we jump back into Postman, you'll remember that the API gives us back a array of films and each one contains some details about that film. So what we want to do is we're going to copy some of these and then we're going to paste it just inside our state array just like this. And then if we format and save this, everything just looks a bit neater. So for now, all we're doing is we're going to hard code some of these films and we're going to display them down in our JSX here just to get the UI working. And eventually we will go to the API, which we just signed up for, and we will get these films from the API. Now that we have some movies in state, we're going to jump down to our JSX and we're going to delete this and we're going to create a new component which is going to render the list of movies. So if we look over here, this will be this list of films and eventually we're going to use the same component to display our list of favorites. So we'll jump into our code, we will open up the source folder and we're going to create a folder called components. So this just keeps everything organized. Inside components, we're going to create a new file. This will be called movielist.js. In our movie list component, we're just going to create a component in the usual way. So say import React from React. We'll create a function component, which is just an arrow function. And this is going to return a list of movies for us. So inside this React fragment, we're going to open our braces and say props.movies.map. And inside the map function, we're going to get the current movie that the map function is currently on and an index. And for each, of, for each of those movies, we want to render a div. And inside the div, it's just going to be an image tag, which displays the movie poster. So if we look at the finished example, each thing is going to just display a poster. So then we'll say the source is going to equal movie.poster, which comes from the movie object. So if we look back at our Postman collection again, each item has, oops. What have I done? Oh no, go back. Okay, each film has a poster which gives us a link to an image. So all we have to do is just display this in an image tag. If we jump back to our code, since we've copied a bunch of 
films from the response, we're going to have some test data here to play with. So we're taking it from this poster. Let's just jump back to movie list and we have an error. Image elements must have an alt prop. Okay. So say alt, alt equals a uh, movie just for now. Save this and don't forget to export your component. So export default movie list. So if we jump back to our version, there's nothing displaying yet. Now we just have to call the new component that we created and pass this list of movies to it. So inside our div, we're going to say movie list and movies is going to be equal to movies. And we'll close this, format it so it looks nice. And let's save. And here we go. So we have our three movies displaying on the screen. Just a quick recap on what we're doing. So we've created a state variable called movies. It holds some movies which we get from the API eventually. Uh, we have a movie list components which we pass these movies to. Inside the movie list, we're just using the map function to display each movie from the array. Each movie has its own div and an image within it that displays the poster. Okay, so let's add some styles to make this look a bit nicer. If we go back into app.js at the very top, we are going to uh, import bootstrap. So we'll open our quotes and type bootstrap slash dist slash CSS slash bootstrap dot min dot CSS. So that's a bit of a mouthful, but all this is doing is taking the CSS from bootstrap. And um, we also want to import some of our own styles. So we'll just do import app.css which comes from here. So if you go to source app.css, we're just going to delete everything in here because we don't need it. And then we're going to type body and then we'll say background is going to be this to give us not quite a black background, but a nice one similar to Netflix. I will say the color of the text is just going to be white. So we'll do all F's for that. Okay. So now we have a nice background. If we go back into app.js, we've already imported bootstrap. So now all we have to do is apply some of the styles that bootstrap gives us to our JSX on the div. We're going to add a class name of whoops, class name equals container fluid. So this is just a bootstrap container. What we want to do within this is we want to have all these movies on the same row and we want to make the row scrollable so that we get this nice horizontal scroll effect for each of the rows that we have. We will create a div just outside the movie list. And this is going to be class name of bro. So this comes from bootstrap and then we're just going to paste the movie list component within this div. So take a few spaces within it and paste it just like this. This is trying to put things on the same row, but because we're on a smaller screen here, you can see it drops down to the next line. So all we have to do here is add our own class just to say, don't drop things to the next line, just continually display them. So we're going to add a class to our top level div here, the container called movie app. And then in our app.css, we're going to say movie app dot row. So this is saying all the rows inside the movie app class, we want an overflow of X to be auto and we want the flex wrap to be, this prevents the wrapping on the next line. And then if we look at our example now, we have three films, one of them is off screen, but if we scroll over and back, it works. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is jump into the movie list and we're just gonna add some styles to this div just to space some of these things out a bit nicer. So we're going to say class name, and then we want this to be a flex box container. So we'll just say D flex, which is a bootstrap class. And then we're going to say justify content start. And then we're going to say M dash. So these classes all come from bootstrap. So if we save this, it spaces things out a bit nicer for us. Okay. So things are looking good so far. We have some movies being displayed that we can scroll through. Now it's time for us to add in a call to the API to actually go and get some films from the API. So if we take a new line just below all the state stuff and then type const get movie request equals and then this is going to be an arrow function. And inside this, we're going to make the request to the API. So we're going to do const URL is going to be equal to, if we jump back to Postman, remember this URL that you got from your email, this is what we're going to want to take. So we're just going to copy this 
and we're gonna paste it in as the URL. So we're going to hard code a search, which is the S parameter, just until we get things working. And eventually we will take the search parameter from whatever the user types. So if we look at our finished example, there's a, we're gonna have a text box up here that actually does stuff whenever they type into it. And we will get to that eventually. Okay, so back in our code, we have our URL. And now all we want to do is say const response is equal to await fetch. We're just gonna use the fetch API here to make a request. Inside the fetch, we'll just say URL like this. And it's saying cannot use keyword await outside an async function. So to make this function async, all we have to do is type async just before the braces. And now it's just saying things aren't defined, which is fine. So when the fetch request happens, it stores the response in the response object that we just created. Now we have to convert this to JSON. So we're going to say response JSON equals await response.json. So this is just a built-in thing that converts our HTTP response into JSON. So it's going to look like this. So if we do console.log just to show this in action, we'll do response JSON, uh, response, oh, spelled response wrong up here. Okay. Okay, so now we have a request that happens that goes to our API and it converts some stuff to JSON and the JSON gets logged to the console. The last bit that we need to do to get everything to work is to actually call this get movie request. So to call the get movie request function, we're going to use a use effect hook. Uh, in here, all we're gonna have is get movie request. This is saying it's not defined, so we will define it up here. And down in here, our use effect hook, just before the closing brace, we want to take a comma and add an empty array. So what this means is that the get movie request function is gonna get called when the page loads only. Whenever we add a search bar, we want the get movie request to be called whenever the user types. But we'll get to that later. For now, we just want the request to fire when the page loads just to show things working. So now if we save this and open our dev tools to see the console. So in our console, we have an object. If we expand the object, you can see we have a search array within it. Each item within this array has a film with Star Wars in the title, and that's because we searched for Star Wars up here. So this response is the same as what we've seen in our Postman collection. It has a search array and it's got a bunch of films. This is what we've been using to display our film so far. So now all we have to do is replace this, this hard-coded stuff with whatever comes back in the response. So to do that, all we have to do is call the setter function for the movies state object. So we'll just type set movies and it's going to be response JSON dot. And then we only want to take the array. So it's called search. So we do response JSON dot search. So now if we save this, you can see that we've got a whole bunch of films. So this is coming from the response. So just to see this working a bit better, we're going to delete our state object and it's going to initialize to an empty array. This just shows that we're no longer using the hard-coded data. And when the app loads and makes this movie request, it searches for Star Wars, bungs everything into state, and it gets rendered by the movie list. So if we change some things in Star Wars to, let's say, Avengers, hit save. This time it goes and looks for Avengers and gives us back a bunch of Avengers films. So this parameter is what is going to be dynamic, which we'll look at next. To make the search more dynamic, we need to add an input, store the value in state that the user types, and call the API every time that input changes. So if we start by creating a state object, we're just gonna call this one search. Um, actually, we'll call it search value. So that's a bit of a better name. Set search value equals use state and we'll just initialize this to be an empty string. Now down in our JSX, we're gonna create a new row just above the movie list. So this is just a new bootstrap row to help us keep things organized. And in this, we're gonna create, we're gonna create two components. We're gonna have a component for the heading and then we're gonna have a component for the search box. So if we look at our finished example, you can see we have the movies title and then we have a search box over here. So if we create the title first by going into the source folder, into components, 
new file movie this heading dot js and we're going to create a component in the normal way and say const movie list heading equals a functional component it's going to return us a just a div with a class name of a call so within our div we're going to have a h1 and then we're going to say props dot heading and then don't forget to export this just like that and then back in our app we can render this so take a new line just inside the div and we will do movie list heading and hopefully it gets imported whoops hopefully it gets imported for us and it does it's taken from the components folder and we want to pass in a prop for heading which we called heading so we'll say heading equals movies now if we check our app on chrome you can see that this is appearing the reason why we created this as a separate component is because we can reuse it later or the favorites the next component we need is a search component so if we go into our components folder create a new component this time it's going to be called searchbox.js and again we're going to do the normal stuff import react from react and then we're going to do uh, const searchbox it's going to take some props and we're going to return a div which is going to have a class name of column and we're going to add a bootstrap class which makes it a bit smaller so we're going to say call sm4 so this just means it's going to take up four twelfths of the screen within this div we're going to have an input like so and we'll just export this oh whoops export default and we're going to give our input a class name of form control so this is just a bootstrap class that gives us some nice form styles and we're just going to add a placeholder that says type to search now in app.js we just want to render this so we'll do search box and it didn't import it this time so we'll have to import it ourselves we import search box from and then it's in the components folder and search box just like this so now if we save this hopefully it works and there it is Okay, so while we're here, we're just going to tidy up some of these styles and make these more in line with each other. Thankfully, Bitstrap has given us some classes to help with this. So we'll do, let's see, in the div that holds our heading and our search box, we just want to add a new class. I'm just going to say deflex to say this is a flexbox container. We're going to do align items center. And we're just going to add some spacing. So let's we'll add a margin top of four and a margin bottom of four as well. Okay, so that's looking a bit better. Okay, so now we have a title and a search box. The search box accepts a value, but it doesn't actually do anything. So what we have to do is store this value in our search value state. Anytime this changes, we want to call the get movie request. The first thing is to pass the search value and the set search value to our, our search box and hook them up to the input. So we'll say search value is equal to search value and we'll say set search value is equal to set search value so we're just passing these things into our component now in our component we just have to add them to the input for the input value we want to say props dot value and whenever the input changes we want to update the state value we'll say on change is equal to uh, this is going to be an arrow function and it's going to say props dot set search value which is the function we just passed in. And then we want to get the value of the input, which is just event.targets.value. And the event comes from the onChange event and it gets passed in by React. So we have it like this. So now anytime this changes, we're storing the value that they typed in the search value. So just to double check that this is working, we'll go into our dev tools and we'll go to, uh, where is it? Components. So if you look at the app, you can see that we have a bunch of state. So this second one 
is our search value. So now if I, so if I type in here, you can see that the state updates every time I type. Okay, good, so this is working. So we'll close that down. Okay, so now we have the value stored in state and it gets update every time the user types. We want to trigger this get movie request. The best way to, to do that is to say, in the use of heck hook, anytime the search value changes, I want to call the get movie request. So remember with the use of heck hook, any value that we add to this array, causes the use effect hook to run. When the search value changes, get movie request will be called. Now in our get movie request, instead of searching for Avengers all the time, we want to take the value that the user typed and send it along with the request. To do this, we'll use a template string. We will change our speech marks to back ticks to tell us, okay, this is gonna be a template string as opposed to just a normal string. And then we're gonna delete Avengers here. So now we're gonna say S, which is our search term, is equal to is equal to dollar sign. And see how this turns blue? This means that whatever is inside this is gonna be executed as JavaScript. We can add search value in here. Whoops. And it's going to get dynamically applied to this string. And we're just gonna pass in search value to our function and accept it in our function as well. Okay, so now that we're passing in our search value, we get this error that says, cannot read properly, map the bundle fine. So that's because we're sending an empty search value when the app loads. Our search value gets set to an empty string when the app loads and this gets passed to the request. And then the request does give us back a search array because we didn't ask it for anything and it gives us this error. What we want to do is say, only set the movies if we get any search values back. So what we can do is just above the set movies here, we're gonna get rid of this console.log and we're gonna say if response JSON dot search. And if this is true, as in if the response JSON dot search has anything in it, then we're gonna just set movies like this. Now, if we save and reload the app, nothing appears, but if we type, hopefully things start to show up. So as we type Star Wars, you can see it does a search every time the user types. And then we'll try with Avengers. Okay, so this is working and it looks quite cool. As you scroll over, we can see all our search results. And if we delete and search again, again for Star Wars, you can see the request gets called and we update the state with the new results every time. Just to recap what happens, when the app loads, the use effect gets called because use effect hooks always get called on the first render. It calls the get movie request, passing in our search value, which is an empty string. This gets movie request takes the search value and sends it to the request. We then take the response and convert to JSON. And if we have any search results, then we're gonna stick that in state. When the user types, the set search value gets called but whatever they typed and gets stored in state. Because the search value has changed, the use effect hook gets triggered the get movie request function gets called with the new search value and the new search value gets passed to the API. And the same thing happens again. We get a response, we convert everything to JSON. And if we have any search results, we stick everything in state. When the movies, when the movie state updates, it passes the new list to the movie list and it gets rendered onto the screen. Okay, so now we have a working search and we have films coming back from our API. The next thing we want to do is add a favorite bar that appears at the bottom here. So if we look at the finished app, if we hover over, we get this nice uh, enlarged effect and this add to favorites button appears at the bottom. So we'll go into our movie list component and we're going to add a new class to this div and it's going to be called image container. So this is going to help us show and hide the overlay. Now to add the actual overlay, we just create a div just below the image and then we'll say class name is going to be equal to overlay. So this is going to be some of our own custom styles and then we'll add some bootstrap styles just to help us center things. So we'll say deflex, align, items, center and justify, oops, justify, content center. Now we have our overlay div in place. We just need to add some styles to show the overlay on hover. So if we go into our app.css and then we'll say image container, it's going to be position relative and transition. We're just going to say transform a point to S, make sure to spell transition right. Okay, next we're going to say image container hover. We're going to add a cursor. It's gonna be a pointer and then transform. We want to scale by 1.1. Okay, so now if we try this, every time we hover over one of these posters, we get the enlarged effect. Next, we just have to add some style to the overlay. So we'll say overlay. And this is going to be position, absolute. The background is going to be RGB 0, 0, 0, and 0 0.8. Width is going to be 100%. 
transition we want it to ease in so we'll just say 0.5 s and ease opacity is going to be zero initially and whenever we hover over we're going to change it to one which we'll do in a second and we'll just say bottom zero for positioning font size we'll make it 20 pixels padding we'll also make 20 pixels and text align we'll just add it, everything in the center okay so now if we save Nothing shows up yet because our opacity is zero. But if we add a hover effect, so anytime we hover over the image container, we want the overlay to show. So we'll just do this above here. Image container hover dot overlay and opacity will be one. So now if we save and try this, it works. We haven't added anything to the actual overlay yet, but it's appearing on hover, which is what we want. Okay, so next what we're going to do is we're going to create the component that gets displayed in our overlay. So if we go to file, source, components, new file, and this will be called add favorites.js. So in here we'll create our component. And it's going to be an arrow function as usual. And then we're just gonna return a React fragment because we're going to have two elements at the same level. So we'll say span. And then this will just say add to favorites. And we'll give this a class of MR2, which is margin bright two, because we want a small gap between our text and our heart. Okay, so to get the heart symbol, what you're going to do is go to icons.getbitstrap.com and down in the search here, we're gonna search for heart. And then we're just gonna select the heart fill. And then we're gonna scroll down here and we're going to, we're gonna copy this HTML just as it is. And back in our code, just blow the span we created. We're just gonna paste this in like that. And then if you save and format, all this is is a bitstrap heart and it gives us all the styles for us. And then we will export this. So we'll do export add favorite, export default add favorite. Okay, that looks good. We now have our add favorite component and now we just need to pass this to our movie list. So if we go back to app.js, we're going to import add favorite from components that add favorites just like this and now what we're going to do is we're going to pass this add favorites component to our movie list down here the movie list will then render the component in the overlay so we're going to add a new prop called favorite component and it's going to be equal to what we just imported which was add favorites so down in here we'll just paste this like this. So remember that components are just functions. So we can pass them around as a function. So if we go into movie list, we can say up here, const favorite component. It's going to be equal to props, just like this. So now what we're saying is, is we're going to assign our props.favorite component to a variable. And then down in our overlay, just inside the div, we want to render the favorite component as we would any other React component by saying favorite component inside some triangle braces, just like this. Now, if we jump back to our code, it says can't resolve add favorites. So let's see what's happened. If we jump back to app.js and uh, scroll up, uh, add favorites from, oh, I've spelled components wrong. Okay, now if we save this and let's do a search again for Star Wars. Now, if we hover over, the add to favorites appears. Why do we need to pass in our add favorites like this? Why can't we just render it within the movie list? In here, by passing it in, it means that we can pass in different components for different situations. So if we look at our final app, you can see if we hover over the movie search, we get the favorites components. But when we eventually add this to our favorites list and we hover over it, we get removed from favorites component. Okay, so now we have a fancy new add to favorites on hover thing appearing here. Before we continue, we're just gonna make this heart red. So to do this, all we have to do is jump into our add favorites component and just change the fill color to red, just like that. And now if we try it, it should be red. Okay, cool. So it looks nice, but it doesn't do anything yet. So if we click on it, nothing happens. That's because we haven't added any JavaScript to tell it what to do when things are clicked. So to save things as favorites, we're gonna jump into app.js, gonna to scroll to the top and we're gonna add a new state variable, which is going to be called favorites. This is gonna be equal to use state and what we're going to do is whenever we click on a film, we're going to add that film to the favorites. And then we're just going to display this in its own component. Now we have a state variable that's going to hold our favorites. What we have to do is pass a function to the movie list that's going to get called anytime the film poster is clicked. So we'll do that now. 
in the movie list, add a new prop. It's gonna be called handle favorites click. This is going to be equal to a function called add favorite movie that we haven't created yet. We'll create this now. We're gonna take a new line just under the use effect. We're gonna create a function called add favorite movie. And this is going to accept a movie. So now to add it to our state, we're going to make a copy of the current state array as it's gonna be equal to favorites, which is our current state variable and we're going to pass in the movie. So this is just creating an array, a copy of the current array of favorites, and it's gonna add our new movie to it. And then we call the set favorite function and pass our new favorite list to it. So this will update the state with our new array of films, including the favorite movie we just clicked. Okay, so now we have a function to update our state and we're passing this function to our movie list. We just have to add it to the actual film poster itself. So in movie list, we're going to add a on click to the overlay div. So we say on click and it's going to be equal to props dot handle favorites click, which is the function we just passed in. Okay, so now everything is nice and joined up. We're going to open our dev tools and we're going to go to components and then we're going to go to app, which will show us all our different state. So let me make this a bit bigger. So now if we search for Star Wars again, you can see we have a bunch of state things. Now it's a shame that the hooks don't actually tell you the name of the state hook, but you can kind of guess what it is. So this state hook is the search results. This state hook is the search term, which we have up here for our input. And this one is going to be the favorites, I think. So it's empty at the minute because we haven't actually added any favorites. So if we hover over and click on this, you can see that stuff gets added, but it's not what we want. Oh, it's added the wrong thing. It's added a bunch of stuff. Okay, so let's jump back into our code and see what happened. Ah, okay, so we've got a props.handle favorite click, which calls a function back in app.js, but the add favorite movie function accepts a movie and we haven't passed in that movie. We've just passed it a reference to the function, which is no good. So if we fix this by going into movie list and the on click, we're going to convert this to a function. So we'll just make it into an arrow function. And whenever the click happens, it's going to call this function and it's gonna pass in the movie. So we get the current movie from the map function up here. So we're just gonna type in here, movie. So now if we try this again, where's my dev tools? Uh, we're just gonna refresh this and hopefully this works. So let's search for Star Wars again. Whoops, Star Wars and our state's updating, let's try add to favorites. Let's see what appears this time. And there we go. So we've got our movie that got passed in after we clicked the add to favorites button. And if we look at our search results, we can see that this is the same as what we get back in the search results. We're just, make, we're just making a copy of it and we save it into state. Okay, so now that we have our favorites stored in state, the next step is to render them onto our app. So if we jump back into app.js, take a new space at the bottom of our JSX here, and we're going to copy this div, and we're just gonna remove the search box. And for the heading, we're just gonna say this is our favorites. And if we save, you can see this appears. So this is why we made the heading its own component at the start so that we can reuse it based on whatever different type of films that we want to display. We can also copy the movie list row and we'll just paste it just below, just like this. Instead of passing in the movies to this movie list component, we wanna pass in our favorites. So if we paste favorites in here and hit save, you can see that the film that we added to favorites has appeared. And if we add a bunch of these, it gets added to our list. And because these are separate components, but they act the same, we can scroll across each and they work independently of each other. So this is why we made the movie list its own component because we can pass movies to it and display different movies depending on the situation that we're in. So now if we search for different films, say Toy Story, the favorites list stays the same because it has its own state and its own component, but the movies list search results display in this top one. And again, we can add things to our favorites and if we scroll where we can see them. So this is pretty cool. The next thing that we're going to do is that we're going to remove a favorite from the favorite list. So currently if we hover over a favorite, it shows the add to favorites icon. And if we click it, it gets added to the end. This is because we're passing in a function that adds it to the favorite and we're passing in a component that looks or that says add to favorites. So what we want to do is create a different function 
that removes it from our favorites and pass in a different component that says remove from favorites. So we'll start by adding the component. We're going to go to our source folder. We're going to go to components and we're going to add a new one. This time it's going to be called remove favorites js and we're going to close this and create a component and if you haven't guessed this is going to be an arrow function and we're just going to return similar to what we did with the add favorites and we're going to return a span which says remove from favorites and we're going to give this a class name of mr2 so that it's going to leave a bit of a gap between our icon and now if we go back to icons.getbitstrap again and down in the search we're going to search for uh, let's search for delete and see what comes up let's use this x square so if we click on it and scroll to the bottom and then we're just going to copy all the html and in our remove favorites we're just going to paste it in like this and this is saying jsx expressions must have one parent element which means we need to put it inside a react fragment just like this now if we save this and okay that looks good we're just going to export the component at the bottom here remove favorites like so and we're going to go back to app.js we're going to import it at the top like so and now we're going to pass it to our favorites movie list as a favorite component so instead of passing the ads favorite this time we're going to pass in remove favorites so now if we save this and have a look at Chrome. If we hover over the favorites, you can see it's rendering the remove from favorites. Next, we're going to create the function that removes the favorites from the array in state. So call const remove favorites movie equals an arrow function, which is going to accept a movie just like we did before. So this time we're going to create a variable and this is going to be equal to, and then we're going to do favorites.filter. This is going to take a favorite movie and then we're going to say favorite.imdbid is not equal to movie.imdbid. And then we're going to format this. And then we're just going to set favorites as the new favorite list. Okay, so what this does is it takes in a movie. All of these movies that we've searched for and added to our favorites has an imdbid that comes from the API. What we're going to do is whenever we click remove on this one for example we're going to filter the favorite lists and filter out that movie from our current favorite lists whenever we use the filter function on an array it gives us back a new array and then we just set this new array into state now all we have to do is pass in our remove favorite movie function to our movie list and if we click save we'll try this out so we have some favorites here if we click remove it gets removed okay so our app is looking quite well we can add things to favorites and we can search for stuff and we can remove things from our favorites and everything seems to be working good. But if we refresh the page, we lose everything. So what we want to do is save our favorites in local storage so that whenever we refresh the page or come back or close the browser or whatever, that our favorites are still gonna be saved. So this makes this an app that you can actually use. So if we, so if we go back to app.js and we're going to create a function just below the use effect hook called save to local storage. And this is going to take a list of items and it's going to be an arrow function. And then within this function, we're going to say local storage dot set item. And then we're going to open our braces and then we have to give it a key. So a key is what we use to save and retrieve these items from local storage. So we're going to call this react movie app favorites and then we have to take a comma and the second argument here is the things that we want to save. So so it's best to save strings into local stories. What we have to do is say json.stringify, open our braces, and then we're gonna pass in our items. This is gonna save whatever items we pass in to local storage. Now in our add favorite movie function, we're gonna take a new line just after set favorites. And we're going to say save to local storage and we're going to pass in the new favorite list. So now anytime a, we add a film to our favorites, the add favorite movie function gets called as usual. It does its thing to save it to state, but then we're adding this extra step at the end to say, okay, take my favorite movies and save them into local storage. So now we can try this by opening. Okay, so now we can see this working by going into Chrome, going to our dev tools and clicking on application. 
and to the left here you'll see storage local storage and then you just want to expand this out and under local host 3000 we should eventually see our stuff being saved to local storage so with this window open that you are app to search for stuff if you click add to favorites you can see it's appeared here so our react movie app favorites which is our key has the json that we saved into state so this is what's in our favorites state variable currently so if we add some more things this gets updated every time as you can see at the bottom here this is getting updated and each time we do this it gets updated so it's just an array that gets stored into local storage that is the same as our favorites state variable so now we want to retrieve the items from local storage whenever they app loads a good place to do this is in a use effect hook as the use effect hook always runs when the app loads for the first time so we'll just create a new one use effect it's going to be an arrow function in inside it as well and then we're going to say const movie favorites it's going to be equal to json.parse because remember we save our state to local storage as a json string so we need to convert it to an object as we retrieve it so we'll do json.parse local storage dot get item open our braces and then we want to use the key that we save the items to to retrieve the items so it was react movie app dot dash favorites just like this and then we'll put semicolon at the end see of this so now we have our favorites stored as an object in this variable all we have to do is do set favorites and pass in movie favorites and this is saying contains a call to react favorites without a list of dependencies okay so we have to add a dependency array here and since we only want this to happen on the page load, we'll just pass in an empty array. So this use effect hook will only run the first time that the app runs. So now if we save this, and you can see that, so, that the favorites that we added to local stories have started to appear. So if we add some new ones, just to show things working, we'll say Toy Story again, and we'll add Toy Story 1, 3, and 2, two favorites. And let's see if they've appeared. They have appeared. So now if we refresh the app and scroll over, they will have appeared. So the last thing we want to do is remove the favorite from book of stories anytime we click the button or the remove from favorites button. To do this, we just scroll down into remove favorite movie and then we're just gonna do the same thing as what we did with add favorite movie and say save to local storage and then pass in our new favorite list, which was created up here. So now if we save this, we can see our favorites have persisted. If we refresh the page, they're still here. If we remove Star Wars, remove, 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 and refresh, you can see this is still, it's still appearing. So anytime you go to the app now, it's going to book in local storage and pull out your favorites. Okay, so that about wraps it up for this video. I hope you had fun with this one. If you did, don't forget to share it with your friends and hit the subscribe button for more projects in the future. Thanks for watching.